That's why. Uh, Mr. Panel, I'm sure you won't mind if I begin by making clear to our audience that you are Mr. Norman Panel, Conservative MP for Liverpool Kirkdale, not Mr. Charles Panel, the Labour MP for West Leeds. So apart from anything else, I'd like to clear up the conclusion because I'm sure Mr. Charles Panel doesn't agree with the word you say. And even if he does, I don't. And in particular, I don't agree with you on the subject we come here to discuss this evening, which is the Commonwealth Immigrants Act, of which before it was passed, you were a leading uh, proponent. While it was going through Parliament, you were a leading supporter. And now it's been passed and is in action, you are a leading supporter. And indeed, you have said that you want it to be even more stringently and strictly applied. And I think this is a bad and pernicious act, and I would like now briefly to say why, and then invite you similarly to defend it. In the first place, this act establishes something which you never had before in this country, which is restriction and control and limiting the numbers of Commonwealth citizens who can come to this country. For the first time, we've abandoned the principle that the mother country, the centre of the Commonwealth, takes in any Commonwealth citizen who wants to come here as a right. And we've abandoned that, in the sec which indeed has, to a considerable extent, made the governments of many Commonwealth countries distrust and suspect our motives and loosen the ties of the Commonwealth which your party above all claims to be so important. But much more important than that, though that is indeed important, this act is in practice, whatever the five flown words in the preamble, a colour bar act. That is in practice how it works. It's the coloured Commonwealth citizens who are being, in the overwhelming majority, prevented from coming in here. And that seems to me to be a particularly at this time when all over the world the crucial factor of colour is the most important and barriers must be broken down this has built it up. And thirdly, lastly, and perhaps most important of all from our own point of view in this country, this act, the new people behind it, have encouraged, however unwittingly, in practice encouraged ignorance and prejudice in this country about coloured people. You and the act have set the seal of official approval on every British landlady who's ever slammed the door in a coloured face with the words, no niggers here. That Please is a ridiculous it. travesty of the situation. I do so deplore the importation of colour into this question. It's those who oppose the bill, who emphasise the colour question, which need never arise. The bill is absolutely impartial. It deals with all immigrants from the Commonwealth without distinction of class or colour or creed. The bill was absolutely essential. The, uh, you say uh, this was the first time we've applied any restriction. But it wasn't necessary before because they weren't coming in. This is not an immigrant country. Until 1955, more people left this country than came in. But the position was dramatically reversed after that. They came in in increasing numbers. In 1959, 16,000 came in from the West Indies. In 1961, it was 66,000. From India and Pakistan, there were 4,000 in 1959. In 1961, there were 49,000. Obviously, we could not keep an open door for unlimited numbers. There were great difficulties arising in regard to housing and other matters. And this bill had to be introduced. The act had to be introduced. You say, Mr. Panel, that this bill is not, in fact, it's, it's applied without discrimination of colour. Of course it is. In the Act, it's made quite clear that this applies to all Commonwealth citizens. Yeah. What I am saying is that, in practice, this is a colour bar bill, and the giveaway, of course, is the fact that the Irish, the Southern Irish, who, are, who have always been treated, although they left the Commonwealth, as members of the Commonwealth for rights, privileges and duties, as far as this country is concerned, were excluded from the Act. This, in fact and in practice, whatever you may have wanted, whatever the bill's sponsors may have wanted, is a colour bar act. Uh, and not what at is all, more? Not at all. The fact is, of course, that the Commonwealth is 90% coloured. And it was the, the coloured people who were trying to come in. Obviously, it can be represented as a coloured bill in that, since the restrictions must apply to those who were trying to come in. There are only two or three thousand a year who want to come in from New Zealand, Australia and other countries, but it applies, of course, equally to Cyprus and Malta, where, which are not coloured. And again, uh, this very week, Mr. But Panel, uh, Let me touch sorry, on the yes. Irish question as well. Yes. Uh, I was in favour of restriction on the Irish. I think logically it should be applied. You can't apply restrictions to Commonwealth immigrants and not to the Irish, the Southern Irish. Uh, but uh, we were told, uh, it was a difficult argument to accept, uh, that uh, there were two great, the uh, difficulties were too great in applying it to the Irish and the matter would be stuck. Right, simply the Irish were white but, uh, would have kicked up a fuss, me of that, Mr. Powell. I've said officially... It's in the Act you support, Mr. No, Powell. I you voted for that Act, every clause of it, the Irish clause as well. Uh, there wasn't the Irish clause in it. Well, you did, certainly didn't vote against the amendment. You didn't, you, didn't, no. you didn't seek to have that thing excluded. Well, in any case, I'm going to say also that there is a difference in regard to the Irish. They've been coming here, in here over the centuries 
and there is a reciprocal arrangement with the Irish, that is, we can go to Ireland without let or hindrance, which doesn't apply to but other countries. This is the Commonwealth, Mr. Pennell. The whole principle of the Commonwealth has always been, you say, over the centuries, indeed, over the centuries, it's the Commonwealth citizens who've been able to come here. And what is more, much more, in fact, you've ignored the vital point in my argument, which is this has, whatever your intentions, whatever the bill's intentions, has in fact encouraged and stimulated colour prejudice in this country. I don't agree. I don't think there is a colour prejudice in this country. What about the chance? I think this is the most tolerant country in regard to racial relations But your act is making world. it less so, and so are people like so. you. I don't think so. Your I don't think that is so. I, I think it's a very unfair imputation to make. What the about, immigrants what who come about here have perfect civil rights. What about at civil, the time the act was going through? At to. the time the act was going through, Mr. Pannell, this chant that was heard, children in the street, if you, you probably heard it, or you heard of it, I anyway, didn't hear if it. you want a nigger neighbour, vote Labour. Now, I, you don't say that, I don't say but that. you can't shrug off your responsibility. Of course you deprecate it. And that there's always a small minority who take this extreme view, which and I very much deprecate. And there are always cheap votes and cheap it. prejudice, Mr. Powell, no, too, are there not? No, it's not a vote catching There are no votes all. in the unpopular argument that we must try and break down these barriers. That is a very unworthy accusation to make. Your I'm attitude is unworthy, Mr. Mr. Pannell. Oh, you think so? I you do indeed. So? I do you think indeed. I have not the interest of the country at heart as much as you? I don't dispute do you think, that. Do you think it's in, in the interest of the country that these Commonwealth immigrants should come here? Say coloured immigrants, Mr. Pannell, that's what we're talking well, about. Well, the majority are coloured, I quite admit, if you like. Come here without jobs to go to, without homes to go to, very often not speaking the language, English language. Do you think it's the, in the advantage of Commonwealth cooperation for these people to come here and endure misery and as the, they do. And the ultimate hypocrisy of that argument was given the answer to in the House of Commons this week by the Home Secretary, who when he was asked, would he not institute consultations with the Commonwealth to try and stop it from the other end, to try and impose some voluntary limitation by the exporting countries, flatly refused even to have no, consultations no, with the not Commonwealth. Fair, that's not fair. He it's true, really whether it's fair or he not. He said these consultations took place before the Act came in. There were no consultations. They, oh, they yes, were informed. They were. That we was were. Mr. McMillan's had, word. And informed. I spoke to the Prime Minister of Jamaica myself and he gave me the same issue. why will they not, not institute consultations now? Right, because it's, it's a matter of extraordinary difficulty. They failed before. And if you have consultations, it makes us the arbiter of the position. How, may, how are we going to apply a quota? With India, with 90% of the coloured immigrants, if you like, or the 90% uh, of the Commonwealth citizens are from India and Pakistan. You've forgotten they one might, thing. That's very relevant. 90%. Because in fact, the permits under this Act, granted over the year it's been in operation, two people to come in, a very small proportion of those applying, but the, the interesting thing is that um, only four-fifths of the total the, of those granted permits to come in have in fact taken them up, and particularly in, in, in the case of Indian Pakistan, the proportion is even higher. A quarter of them have not taken up. It but seems the flood the is three, already dying 319,000 applications for vouchers were made, of which 280,000 for India and Pakistan. Doesn't that indicate the number that would have come we in? We don't know how many would in fact have come well, in the end. Do you think they're applying for vouchers if they don't want to come in? Why do well, they at least 25% of them have well, done precisely take that. take 20% away from 319,000, how many does that leave? It that leaves 240,000. Yes, 000. about a third of 1% yes, of the population and, and of this country. add to that the, the dependents, who are uh, on the average one and a half per works voucher, and you get a... A considerable